everybody, we got ourselves a Luna Guide. This will be the hero of 7.30. I've had an immense amount of success with her. It is the perfect patch to practice her. And if you're watching this after the patch, perfectly fine. She's a great hero for any carry to learn. She farms fast. She also has really good timings. She has decent team fight. And she also is a hero that gets punished by mistakes because she's squishy and has issues with position. Banana slam jam. A lot of things that you can learn just by practicing Luna and a hero that I've really appreciated learning. I'd really say in the last six months, I've really learned this hero. I play a lot of games of her before. Somewhere in there, I, I started to truly understand Luna. And we're going to talk about why I appreciate this hero so much to begin with. So the reason why I appreciate this hero so much is that we're going to look at her skills as a source of this. The deal with her skills is that they all represent something very different. The way Beam is, is it says, I'm all inning on the lane. This, this ability says, I am laning. This ability, Moonglaives, says, I am jungling. I am interacting with virtually no heroes in the game. So we have heavy laning spell, heavy farming spell, and then we have the ability Lunar Blessing, which is a little bit of both. You know, if you're looking to lane, but also farm, then you need damage for both of those things. It does less damage for farming, but it does more damage for laning. And it's not as good at laning as Beam is, but at the end of the day, most carries want some way to farm. So most of the time, we're trying to avoid maxing beam if possible. But all three of her skills are so slightly different that you can fine-tune her skill build every single game. I feel like I'm going a slightly different skill build every single game based on the exact scenario that's happening, and it feels really good to kind of have a feel of what that is. And Luna's a great hero for practicing that. And Eclipse, as an ultimate, it really says I'm going to fight. Sometimes I take ultimate at level 6 because I'm looking to get a kill in lane and I've put two points at beam. Sometimes I I don't get Luna, I don't get Eclipse until level 11, uh, where I'm looking to farm most of the time. And my first team fight I intend to show up to is around a level 11. Uh, so her skill build is widely variant and it's dependent completely upon what's happening in the game. So that's why I appreciate the hero so much because she's a mechanically simple hero where you kind of have to think about how much you're going to be forced to be involved in the game. The dream on Luna is that you don't get involved in the game at all. That's like the freaking dream. Because the way the hero works is because if you combine Glaives as well as Lunar Blessing, she's one of the fastest farming heroes in the game. Uh, it's absolutely absurd. Just with levels and like one or two small items, she's freaking flash farming like crazy. So the idea is that your goal is to become a flash farming monster. And it's a matter of how much you have to do in the early game to get there. How much do you have to put into the lane? How much do you have to put into early objective taking? How much do you have to participate in early team fights? A lot of that is based on your lane matchup, how well your other lanes are going, if you feel like the opponent's going to gank you a lot. Uh, it really f comes down to, am I going to get interfered with? Do I need to help my team? Do I have the time to farm these items? How much space on the map do I have to farm? The thing about Luna is she farms so fast that your only consideration is, will I actually have the space to farm? So it's a matter of like gauging how much the opponent's going to close in on the map. You know, how much are they going to punish you if you go for the all-out farming build. So that's what we're going to talk about. That's why I love Luna so much. Um, I've enjoyed her immensely in these games, and she's a very stra straightforward hero right now to play because her laning stage is really powerful. If she wins her lane and she has the space to do it, she can get six slotted by like 30 minutes into the game. So specifically for this guide, I usually talk about exactly how heroes' abilities work and when you level them. But like I said, since her abilities are so dynamic in how you choose to use them in lane or not, I'm actually going to use replays to show you guys and talk about exactly why I level her skills. And I'll also briefly talk about the mechanics behind them, but because they're such simple abilities, I'm sure you guys can read up on them very quickly. One mechanic I'd like to talk about is that Moonglaives don't proc items. Like, you don't proc Maelstroms, you don't proc Lifesteal. The only thing that Moonglaives actually procs is, tr is crit. So if your main attack crits, the Moonglaives will do damage based on the main attack critting. So MKB, Maelstrom, Desolator, all of these items are items you try to avoid on Luna if possible because her Glaives, which is her main source of damage, at least her main source of farming, doesn't benefit from these at all. One of the ways that Luna can carry the game is stand still and hit people, and that's why she buys Satanic despite it not working on her Glaives because she's doing so much damage if she's allowed to actually attack. One of the best parts about Luna is that she has bonus night vision. Whenever I'm walking around the map, I think it's really important to take wide turns around trees because you're one of the few heroes that's hard to gank at nighttime. And it's really important to use that because you are position-based. If you do get gone on, you're probably going to die. 
So it's a really important skill to note on Luna that uh, your nighttime vision is really important for your safety in the game. I think that's really about it when it comes to her abilities. But before we get into the replays, let's talk about her good and bad matchups. So despite the fact that Luna has no abilities that give her illusions, she's an insanely powerful illusion hero because her illusions do get Moonglaives and they also get Lunar Blessing. She's a hero that wants to buy Manta, um, but she's not always allowed to buy it. But most of the heroes that are good against her are ones that can make illusions of her like Terror Blade and Shadow Demon, or ones that prevent her from utilizing illusions effectively um, for herself. So these are heroes that have a lot of AoE um, combined with gap close. Talking about like the Sand Kings of the world, the Centaurs, the Axes. Heroes like this that get up in your face and also clear your illusions. Huck, Axe, Centaur. So heroes that prevent her from standing her ground no matter what can be very difficult for her to deal with. Heroes like Razor that static link her. Heroes like Tidehunter that can just anchor smash you and stay in front of your face. Heroes like Jug that you don't do enough single target damage to kill them and they're able to kill you full to zero. Ursa is another example. Um, I don't usually like playing against these heroes because she wants to stand her ground to do her damage and it makes you have to go some wonky builds. And we're going to talk about that uh, in some of my replays because I am against these heroes. The other types of heroes that she has issues with, um, Luna's a very low range. She has only 330 range. A lot of ranged carries have a lot further. For instance, Drow is 625, literally double. Same with a hero like Medusa, 600. So the heroes she also tends to struggle against are ones that outrange her. Um, ones that she can't actually hit before they hit her, and she gets, like, kited. Because Luna is not a mobile hero, but she is very fast. So she's good at using her movement speed, but if you can just keep her away from you in the first place, heroes that naturally build Scotty, as well as a hero like Drow that has a built-in slow, it can be very annoying for her. The cool thing that I like about Luna is that she has ways of dealing with both of these types of heroes. I think Silver Edge is generally the best way to deal with these up-in-your-face heroes because it allows you to position yourself in fights and it's hard for them to find you. And then Blink is actually a great way to deal with these outranging you heroes, like the Drow Ranger, because as long as you actually want to be in front of their face because you'll win the fight against them. Um, I think one of her worst matchups, uh, if on equal footing, is Medusa. Uh, you can't kill her because you don't do enough single-target damage. And you can't um, fight her once she has Scotty. Luna is a hero that purely relies on BKB. Most games, you're going to buy a BKB. So games where you can't stand your ground in BKB are generally the hardest games on Luna. Heroes like Slardar, Razor, single target physical damage that pierces BKB. Very annoying for Luna to deal with, especially because she likes to build Mask of Menace, if possible. That's why Ursa is also annoying. Like I said earlier, Templar Assassin can be annoying. These are the heroes that make it a bit difficult to play Luna, and you have to adjust to them. But the beauty of Luna is she has a bunch of different options, and because you have hard counters, the way you deal with hard counters on any hero is items. And the beauty of Luna is that she farms really fast. So what that means is that if you're dealing with hard counters, you usually go a more farm-heavy build, and you rack up all the items that you need to deal with these heroes. If you're dealing with single-target physical damage, Manta's the way to go, and you get to skip that Mask of Madness if you have to. If you're dealing with gap-closing heroes that get in your face, you can go BKB super early into items like Scotty and Hurricane Pike if you need it. Pretty much every hero has a solution to it. If you're against the Tinkers of the world, against the Drow Ranger of the world, you can go fourth or fifth item Blink after you've got BKB Scotty, you know? So there's a lot of different options for her. Um, and that's what I love about her. Um, I don't want to forget to tell you guys, you know, we talked about what's good against Luna. But when is Luna good, right? What team heroes does she want on her team? I think the most important thing is that your five is a tanky dude. It's like Bane, Ogre, Clockwork, some melee hero. Treant Protector, Abaddon, any melee hero or tanky guy. I'm very rarely picking Luna if I have like a CM5, anything like that. Because like I said, as long as she's not the one that gets gone on, she's super powerful. So I don't want her with like Oracle. I don't want her with any of these backlining fives. I always want her with a hero that's going to run in front of her and allow her to trade with the opponent efficiently. That's a big thing about number one requirement for Luna. So I usually will immediately eliminate Luna from my hero pool if my support does not fit with it. Next, 
usually I like any hero that helps me group up eventually. So Mars offlane is great because his bull, or his W benefits from your damage, as well as the fact that he locks people down for your Eclipse. A hero like Beastmaster that provides you with all the auras, and you can take early objectives like Roche and Towers. Heroes that you're going to innately group up with. She doesn't really want to play a split push farm game. She wants to play a once you get a couple items, run at the opponent kind of game. She wants high tempo heroes. She doesn't want like a tinker mid. She wants high tempo, run at you heroes that will buy space for her for like five or ten minutes, and then you group up in team fight. That's the kind of lineup she wants to play with. Really no exceptions. Anything that's outside of that description just makes it more difficult to play. So just keep that in mind. So like in this game, since I'm against a much lower damage offlaner, and Skyrath is also a low damage hero, and I also know they're going to cast a lot of spells, I go for the stick in my starting items, and I also level beam. So when it comes to starting items on Luna, I'd like to minimize regen as much as possible. So I like to minimize regen items on her in the current patch, because supports can share regen with you, and her level 1 is pretty strong for a carry, giving both you and your support 5 damage, or beam is a pretty nice ability. We're never leveling glaives in the lanes, let's just like forget about that for now. So there's even a decision when it comes to leveling glaives, or sorry, your beam, or whether or not you level your aura. I'd say it's mainly about last hit damage. So in this lane specifically, I'm against a support Shadow Shaman that does 74 damage. That's an awful lot. So notice how all my starting items are damage, a Quelling Blade, and then I leveled my aura. So I knew I needed as much damage as possible to get CS in this lane. If I'm less concerned about damage, I'm more likely to level beam. That's something you can always keep in mind when it comes to last hitting damage. Um, in a future patch, if supports aren't allowed to share regen with you, or you're in a bracket where you're dealing with regen issues because your teammates aren't buying regen, then you can replace these two bra or this circlet, for instance, with some tangos, and then fly yourself a salve later. I would never really start the game with more than one set of regen, that being a set of tangos. Um, you can always fly it out to you pretty early. So let's just keep that in mind for the rest of the video. But in the current patch, it is the meta to not buy regen on cores, um, except for maybe one set of tangos after the lane starts. So in this lane specifically, we talked about why I love it. So the biggest thing about Luna is that you don't want the lane to shove into you. You want to get level 2 and level 3 before the opponent. It's super important because her level 2 power spike is amazing for a carry because both of her spells are very useful. And her level 3 power spike, which you always take aura at level 3, at least in the current iteration of it, is also insanely strong. Because giving two heroes in the game 15 damage at 2 minutes in is insanely powerful. How much do you pay for 15 damage? A broadsword is 15 damage. That is 1,000 gold. So giving two heroes, that's 2,000 gold basically, Lunar Blessing. It's pretty insane, it's free damage, and you pretty much win every trade, get every CS from then on, as long as you're allowed to hit creeps. So we're going to talk real quick. So notice how I'm not letting the lane push into me. Notice how I'm constantly like hitting this creep such that uh, I'm not dealing with like three creeps in my face. Because just like any other ranged hero, her biggest issue is she doesn't have innate damage block and she's not going to be allowed to hit the opponent if she has a bunch of creeps in her face. So a lot of defensive aggro pulling the creeps under tower if I need to, as you saw there. And the second I get level two and they don't, I'm always going to be super aggressive. Notice how I'm forcing as many trades as possible with Luna. If I get level 2 before they do, that's a really important thing. If you don't get level 2 before the opponent, so be it. You know, it's life. So I love using Beam like this. Where a lot of times people use Beam to secure CS. This is actually the best way to use Beam. You hit the creep once when it's two hits away from dying. Then you Beam the opponent. And then you hit it again. That's a great way to get denies. I don't think people utilize that very much. Whenever there's a creep in a risky spot, a precarious situation, two hits away, I'll always walk up and beam it like this. Boing. Great way to secure CS. So using beams for little CS interactions in the early game, very important. You should virtually never use beams unless you're chasing them, like you saw the second I get level 2, or you're using it to secure CS. Um, and you don't just use it, very rarely are you using it from like long range to secure the CS. That's going to happen sometimes, especially if your support like really sucks. But that's like not the ideal way to be using beam, guys. That is not the ideal way to be using beam. So if your support's ever getting gone on, help them. You do a ton of damage. As long as your support's not going to die, help them. You do so much damage. If you're not the one getting gone on as Luna, you're super powerful. So in this lane, I'm dealing with a hero with double slow. Cinderbrew as well as Thunderclap. So if you're against a kill lane of any sort, if you're against a hero that threatens to bring you full to zero, you're Russian boots, guys. Because as long as Luna's alive, she's super scary. 
I already hit for 69 damage, which is super nice. And I also already have built-in really fast movement speed. A big difference between Luna and like Drow and Medusa is that Luna is super fast. 325 base move speed, people. She is super fast. With Io and Boots, I've got 392 move speed. That is like insanely fast. So positioning in lane is key. The only time I skip Boots is if I am not threatened by the opponent to kill me, or they have like a bunch of stuns that are going to hit me no matter what. In that case, I'll just buy stats. But in this lane, since it's positional base slows, I'm going to go for the boots. Notice how I'm never letting the lane push into me really hard. You know, never letting it push into me really hard as best as I can. I'm always looking to defensively aggro and pull it under tower if I have to. It's really important. So this is pretty much our skill build every single game at level 3. Very rarely is that an exception. And almost every trade you take is going to be good if you use your support. Bad if you don't. So if your support sucks, then, you know, that changes the way you play the lane. Don't be as aggressive on Luna. The thing about Luna is I'm going to be showing you some bad games, and you can adjust your play when your support sucks. So whenever your support's pulling, just make sure you don't feed on Luna. She's really fast, but, like, notice how passively I'm playing, making sure I don't get caught out of position when my support's pulling. Even though I don't want the lane pushing into my tower, I ideally don't want the lane forward, because I am a squishy ranged hero. But like I said, you can use positioning on Luna very effectively. Um compared to other ranged heroes, because she's much faster than them. So sometimes I hold this skill point if I'm concerned about lane equilibrium. Um, but in this game, since um, I'm in a lane I don't want to be in, because they threaten me a lot, notice how these heroes do have kill potential on me, and I've already acknowledged that. I do take glaives the second that the pulls start happening. So if the pulls are not happening in the lane sitting in front of my tower, I'll hold this skill point um, and wait for later, because I don't want to use glaives to accidentally push the lane. So it's definitely a hero that you need to consider holding your skill point. Um, if I end up getting into an engagement where I think that second point in beam will give me the kill, if I've held the skill point, I can also use it to put in a beam. You'll see that in some of my games if you watch me on stream especially. So holding that skill point at four is really useful. A lot of games. This game specifically, I didn't. But what I love about Luna is that if she's farming, you're winning. Period. It doesn't really matter. You're going to outfarm pretty much every hero in the game at this stage. Like, if you have one or two small items, you're going to outfarm them. So based on how well my lane's going, if I think I have to completely ditch the lane, I might go back for a Mask of Madness. But every little item on Luna is, like, quadruple dipping, right? Because you have Glaives. So every little stat item you get, every little damage item you get is super useful. So the only time that I go for Mask of Madness right away is when my lane is absolutely garbage, or I already have treads, and I'm free farming. Like, I'm not dealing with heroes at all. So Mask of Madness is for really bad games and, like, amazing games, okay? That's, that's where I put Mask of Madness on Luna. Um, so if I am absolutely have all the space in the world to farm, or I can't lane at all, Mask of Madness. If I, that is not the case, I do not go Mask of Madness. So in this lane, I've been heavily contested. I am fearful of dying um, to these two heroes, especially when Brewmaster gets six, and they also have a heavy rotating mid Night Stalker. So I know that I could get ganked. I know I could get invaded on. So the best thing about Luna is learning how much you have to defend yourself. The beauty about Luna is her defense sucks. So in the words of whatever these great coaches of actual sports say, the best defense is a good offense. And that's how Luna works. Your items need to be as aggressive as you are scared, if that makes sense. And if you think you can actually push the heroes away that are going to gank you. So in this case, even though the heroes I'm laning against threaten me, notice how I am fighting them. And I've gauged that I can fight them. So always ask yourself, can I fight these guys? Do I think I can? As you get better and better at Luna, that's what I've learned, okay? The better I've understood matchups, the more I've understood, can I fight these guys? And if I think I can, I'll go all in on fighting people. I will. Because as long as they get out of my face, I will eventually free farm and farm very fast. Luna's biggest limitation to farming is people killing her and people interfering with her. So notice how in this lane, I don't want to deal with the people I'm against. Pretty much the second I get treads, I'm down to start jungling. In this game, I happen to get treads at level 4, because Io's been laning with me a lot. So the whole point of Luna is to eventually hit a point where I want to just shove the lane out and then jungle. However early you can make that happen, the better. Sometimes it's level 6. Sometimes it's level four. The sooner that we can get that done, it's usually treads, the better. So notice how we get our treads, 
And then the entire game plan is going to be the bully the opponent away, if possible, like you're seeing here. And then we're going to farm. And Luna is very different than a hero like Antimage. On a hero like Antimage, if you have a good lane, most of the time, you're keeping it right here. Why? Because the hero can't flash farm the jungle, and it's almost impossible to gank an Antimage if the lane's just sitting right next to his tower. Luna is the complete opposite. You are a sitting duck when it comes to ganks, and you flash farm the fuck out of the jungle. So the absolute second that you are allowed to push the creep wave and hit it, you are done stagnating it in front of your tower. Doesn't matter if the offlaner is a hero you think you need to shut down, because Luna will farm five times faster than any other hero in the game. Okay? So the second you could do this, notice how we've officially made them fuck off. We are going to farm like mad. And so like I said, because I'm fearful of possibly getting ganked while farming, I am not going to go Mask of Madness, despite the fact that I plan to farm an awful lot. Another thing I have learned is that if I go back for points and glaives too early on into the game, meaning that I, I hold my aura at two points, I've noticed it actually becomes very difficult to push the lane out against these heroes. It makes it easier for you to CS with that extra 10 damage. It makes it easier for you to bully them away. So the only time I stop leveling this at two is when I am not laning anymore. Like I am absolutely done laning. My laning sucks or the hero I'm laning against is a terrible matchup for me. I don't want to lane against them anymore. But if I feel like I can lane at all, I'm going to keep maxing Lunar Blessing. Because if your team wants to gank for you, it's better. It helps a lot with killing people. And it also just helps in general with laning. So just think about the fact that with both of these skills, you're going to farm pretty fast as long as you have at least one point in Glaives. As long as you can minimize hero interaction, you're benefiting rather than speeding it up. So notice how even though I'm ahead in levels, I'm always defensively aggroing and hitting creeps. And that's the goal for Luna in like the first 10 minutes is to hit this period as fast as possible. I'm just running away from people, you know, I'll let this guy have control. The only time I'm ever aggressive is when my team is with me. This hero is not independent in the slightest. All of her abilities, the way she works as a concept, she helps with a lot of damage with her ultimate and beam if she needs it. And her aura is fantastic, but she's squishy as fuck. So the times that you're aggressive and you're contesting the opponent is not when you're winning. It's when your team is with you. Notice that. Notice how even though I'm like a level and a half or two above this brewmaster, I'm like away from him. And the second he gets level six, which is the ability that kills me, I will always dip. There is absolutely no reason to risk laning on Luna if you have any reason that you think you're going to die. The best neutral items are ones that give you regen. If you go Mask of Madness, the best ones are ones that give you damage or stats. So pick pull, broom handle, possess mask. And the time that I leave bottom jungle is when my team is doing things elsewhere and I get booted out. So I want to let you guys know that in an ideal world, I will not go to my ancients, okay? I will not go to my Ancients before Dragonlance or Mask of Madness, whichever one I have chosen to go. If you don't have Dragonlance, you have to be too close range to the Ancients to actually hit them without taking any damage. And without Mask of Madness, you don't have to sustain. So without these two items, it's very difficult to go Ancients. You should avoid going Ancients at all if you don't have one of these two items. If you're in a really shitty game and you're stuck being thrown to the Ancients, it is what it is. But once you get one of these two items, I'm still going to stay in my own jungle. And the reason for that is, is that I'm always willing to help defend my bottom tower. If my team wants to make a move to defend this bottom tower against Brewmaster, I will help them. That is the biggest thing about Luna. She doesn't do anything on her own, but if her teammates do something relevant, she's usually willing to help them because her aura and her damage output is so high. So I want to linger around here to help my teammates defend bottom, but if I get booted out and my team is making plays elsewhere like you see here, I'm out of here. I have no attachment to this area once I feel like I'm threatened. So I see Night Stalker walking into our jungle, the Dawnbreaker I saw there as well, I'm using the max night vision. I also love maxing her aura, not only for what I talked about in lane, but you also see further so you can avoid ganks better. As long as you have Dragonlance or Mask of Madness, you can generally farm Ancients. But like I said, every single time a fight occurs, I'm willing to go to it. I will show up casually if I'm not the target, right? That's the biggest thing, if I am not the target. When I don't have Mask of Madness, I still take damage, but notice how I'm still farming these just fine. I'm perfectly happy to fly myself one or two salves in a game like this. I have no qualms with that at all. 
But just look how fast she farms. And as long as you're allowed to farm like this, it feels so fucking good. So the second Mayo flies out to me, I don't have to fly myself a salve, but there are games on Luna that I will fly myself salves. The Mask of Madness has to do with whether or not I'm going to get ganked, guys. I understand the sustain is nice, but you'd rather have a Dragon Lance with an extra, you know, 240 HP if you're going to get ganked. Then you would rather have a Mask of Madness, I assure you. So the second we can rotate to towers conveniently, we will. And this game gets blown wide open pretty fast. And when I'm against heavy farming carries like Medusa, Anti-Mage, heroes that are going to take longer to come online than me, I'm going to go the earliest fighting items that I possibly can. And the reason that is, is because my hero farms really fast, even though I have Dragon Lance and a Mithril Hammer, I have 114 CS at 11 minutes. So the biggest thing about this is that you only need to buy items that accelerate your farming if you need a lot of items. But if you're against heroes like Medusa and Manti Mage, like I said, that need a bunch of items to come online, I'm just going to go all in on fight items because I can keep up with them and farm while fighting the opponent. So we're actually going to be done with this game. And I'm just letting you guys know that usually the timing for fighting on Luna is BKB. If I feel really powerful, my BKB is actually coming out earlier than usual. If I'm feeling really weak, I'm usually avoiding BKB. Because most of the time that I'm feeling weak, I still can't fight even if I have a BKB. The only exception to this is if I feel like I can BKB TP while I'm farming. Meaning that I want to keep farming, and if the opponent ganks me, I can just BKB TP out. I will buy a BKB in that situation, because it technically is a farming item. So just a quick side note, I don't really feel like you need to watch the lane in this one specifically, but in this game I had a punch 5 that didn't really help me very much, and just notice the variation in starting items. I start with a bit of regen, I fly myself a salve, and then it still follows the same build, you know? I end up going for a Mask of Madness because I know I need a lot of items to carry this game, because I'm against Storm who can gank me and Ursa, so I end up going for a bigger farming item this game, but the theory is still the same. Now, we're going to go ahead and do, get into a game where my support wasn't completely griefing me, but it was a pretty hard game, level 1. Big difference between the first lane. I'm barely interacting with the opponents at all in this lane, because my Clockwork isn't a very strong hero um, against Timbersaw, and we're also going for the level 2 timing that I need my Clockwork's help with. So notice how, instead of like confronting the opponent like you saw in the last lane, I'm pretty much avoiding them at all costs, and then like beaming the range creep to get the last hit with hitting it. Notice how me and Clock are like committing for the range creeps. So now that we got level 2, we can look to be aggressive, just like in the first lane. See the same thing? This is the dream. This is the absolute dream if you can do it. So in the previous game, I left my lane on really good terms. In this lane, I'm getting pelted by spells. Despite the fact that I'm slightly out-leveling the Timber Saw, I'm not exactly having a free farm lane. Yeah, we got a kill early, but this Timber Saw has constantly been playing in my face. I've kind of had to play passively, despite quote-unquote winning the lane. And I would say, if you don't get to this point on Luna, you probably fuck something up. And that, all that means is you're going to have to jungle probably before treads. And if you're having to jungle before treads, go Glove of Haste plus Band of Velvet Skin rather than the boots. Because the boots are only helpful if you're actually laning. Uh, so that's really important to keep in mind. But notice how in this game, since I'm against an offlaner, I can't really hit because it's Timbersaw with reactive armor. And I know I'm going to be jungling, and I know I'm going to be interacting with the lane very little. Because Skyrath Mage is pelting me and I can't bully the Timbersaw. I go back for a second point in Glaives. Just remember, Moonglaives, you start maxing it if you feel like your interaction with opponent heroes in the near future is going to be very low. And this can change every single level. And we'll talk about that, what I mean more about that later. So notice how my sole purpose is the same as it was before. Push out the lane and GTFO. Just push out the lane. Notice how all I'm trying to do is defend my tower. I'm just like, get out of here, creeps. I don't want any of this shit. Just get out of here. This is not the ideal game that we want to be playing, where we're dealing with a bunch of heroes in our face and we're getting booted out of our lane. Very different from the last game. But if your team fights with you, you're absolutely help willing to help them do so. So same thing as before, but we left our lane not by choice, but because we had to. Notice our skill build difference between this game and last game. Getting completely booted out of lane. Just taking whatever farm the opponent's willing to give us. They boot us out of an area, we leave. And notice how I said I go Mask of Madness when I'm having absolute free farm, no chances of getting ganked, or I have absolutely no intention of interacting with the opponent. And that's the case here. There's a Weaver invading my Ancients. 
And here's what happens. This is a bad Luna game. Because the dream for Luna is to get farming items in her own jungle. Got booted out of there. And then go to her Ancients. After she's been booted out. I even got booted out of there. So that's exactly what we don't want to be happening in a Luna game. And sometimes it's just unavoidable. There's absolutely nothing you can do about it. And that's the nature of the game we're currently playing. So if that's the nature of the game, I think about how they kill me, whether it's slows chasing me around, or whether it's stuns. If it's stuns, I'm probably going Dragonlance because I need that raw HP. If it's slows and running at me, like this lineup, I'm going to go movement speed, Mask of Madness. Just get me away from these guys. I need to avoid them on the map. If they take over my Ancients, I'm going back to my normal jungle. And I just have to run around. I can utilize the fact that my hero is very fast to farm the map. Avoid them at all costs. Mirror their movements. They go bottom, I go top. They go top, I go bottom. They chase me out of my own jungle again. Such is life. Nothing you can do about it. Defensive farming as much as possible. And this is how you have to play Luna. Eventually you will get items. As long as you're not feeding during all of this. Don't overplay your hero. Do not overreact to this shit because you are not strong. Even if you are having free farm, your hero individually is not strong. So one thing you can do is force the opponent to react. And sometimes Jenkins deaggers the tower five times while you're a carry. It makes you tank the tower and then you die. Fucking Jenkins. But the goal is, if possible, to use the fact that your hero in tandem with allies can threaten buildings. And if you can force the opponent to TP bottom like that and then not die, fuck Jenkins. That's perfect. That's the best way to make space for yourself. That's really the only way Luna can make space for herself, is by doing exactly what we did there without dying. It's a really important note, the not dying part. So notice how we're getting stuck fighting, and that's why I've gone back for points in my aura. But we have some serious issues with Timbersaw. We realize we cannot fight them at all. We have dropped the plan of fighting them entirely. So now it's time to narrowly escape away from the opponent and push any creep waves we possibly can. And that's why the Mask of Madness is so important, because it doesn't keep us safe in regards to um, tankiness. It just clears waves as fast as possible. The problem with Luna compared to other illusion heroes or flash farmers is that she has to show herself on the creep wave the entire time she's farming. So the Mask of Madness in games that are really bad minimizes the amount of time we're showing in lanes, and when the opponent chases after you, notice how they chased after me here, I can TP away, and that gives me a little bit of time to farm these camps. And the beauty of Luna is that's all the time in the world you need to farm these camps. It's just a little bit. People will chase you around, but you're really fast, and you farm really fast. So it's going to take time for them to keep up with you. I even got the value win lace in this game because I knew I needed to run away so much. So every time I see them showing bottom like this, immediately push the wave. Pretty much never hitting buildings on Luna. So the reason why I don't hit buildings on Luna is because it's the same idea as what I talked about um, when it comes to exerting your own strength. Luna as a hero individually, incredibly gankable and incredibly squishy. Incredibly weak if she does not have teammates in front of her fighting. Incredibly strong if she does. So when I'm hitting buildings, you'll pretty much always see me have a teammate. You know, last game you saw with the IO, other games it'll be with my offlaner after they gank for me, or I go to their lane. But individually, I'll never hit towers. You put yourself in way too much danger, and it's not only that, but the time you spend hitting the tower could have been spent hitting jungle creeps. And you clear jungle creeps really fucking fast. So every second that you're spending on the tower is robbing you of farm. So really quick, we're going to talk about talents. So a lot of games I do end up with this skill build. You know, it may change in the future patch, but I end up with this skill build. When it comes to these level 10 talents, it really comes down to how much you think you're going to be farming. How much of the game you think you're going to be farming. If you think it's pretty much 95% of the game, because it's either a perfectly free farm game or a really shit game like this one, we're going to take the Moonglaive's damage reduction. It adds about 25% damage to what you're hitting. It's a lot um, to reduce the 8% Moonglaive's damage reduction. But if we don't feel like we need that speed to farm and we are going to hit a timing, kind of similar to the last game, then we're not going to take either talent at level 10. Because the Lucent Beam mini stun is a pretty shit talent until later. It's not good to take when you have one point in beam, you know, it's pretty bad. So we're either taking the 8% Moonglaze reduction at 10 most of the time when we take it, or we're going for a second point in beam and then ulti at 11. And then, third point in beam, then second point in ultimate, then a fourth point in beam, 
Then we take the 15 talent, the Lucent Beam cooldown. And then at level 16, we will take the Lucent Beam mini stun. That is really important to note. The Lucent Beam mini stun is only good because of this level 15 talent. If you guys are watching this in a future patch and they've removed this 15 talent, I want to let you guys know that they nerfed the hero significantly. Because this level 15 talent, the Lucent Beam cooldown, is absolutely absurd. It goes from 6 seconds to 2.5. This ability is insane. So you have an ability that's considered like a mini stun, and if you couple the 3.5 second cooldown with the Lucent Beam mini stun, she has a 1.2 second stun on a 2.5 second cooldown. It's pretty dumb, okay? So that's a lot of her damage output in games where she's fighting and games where she's not like super free farming. If you're like super free farming, trust me, you'll do plenty of right click damage. But if you're not ultra free farming, that's the build. It's also very good for killing like mobile mids, like the Queen of Pains and the Void Spirits and stuff. I'm more likely to take the Lucent Beam mini stun if I'm dealing with elusive heroes, pucks, quops, Void Spirits, stuff like that. But in this game, I've already mentioned, complete dog shit game. If I have any intention of fighting the opponent, I'm always going Dragonlance. Positioning wise, it's too important. You have 330 attack range. You get 140 extra from the Dragonlance. It's very significant. It's very significant when it comes to actually being able to right-click heroes. But if I have absolutely no intention of right-clicking heroes, I will skip Dragonlance. The biggest thing about Manta is that it's not a BKB. Most of the time when you're dying on Luna, BKB is the only item that's going to save you. The only time I go Manta on Luna is when I have absolutely no intention of fighting the opponent, or I am absolutely free farming. Please remember that. Right now, in the current meta, you just don't have the luxury to go Manta. It is an amazing item if you're allowed to get it, okay? It is amazing. You can clear, like, two creep waves with a set of Manta illusions. I want you guys to think of Manta for Luna as a Midas. It doesn't really help you in fights all that much, and it makes your farming speed fucking go crazy, okay? So you're obviously never buying Midas on this hero. If you're going to buy a Midas, just rush a Manta after the Mask of Madness. This is basically me buying a Midas on Luna. Because I've said to my team, I can't fight the Tempersaw, I can't fight the Troll. They have a mid shattered Demon whose entire purpose is to ruin my game. I'm not fighting them forever. I want you guys to realize that I've embraced this. And when you're in your shitty Luna games, this is exactly how you have to play. <laughs> because Luna is not a comeback hero in the sense that she doesn't fight her way back into the game. <laughs> She, if she's behind, it's because it's going to look like a game where you just die kind of instantly. So the only way you can come back is getting like four items. And the best way to get four items is to make yourself farm faster and faster and faster and faster. So that's what we're doing here. So I take the Moonglaze Reduction. I see the opponent team bottom. And all I'm going to do is push this wave and get out. Minimal time showing on creep waves. Clear as many jungle camps as possible. That's the purpose. Always trying to stack if I can. The thing about Luna, real quick... Is her ideal farming pattern is to stay in her own jungle until Dragon Lance or Mask of Madness. And then the first opportunity she gets where the opponent goes to that area, she then goes to Ancients. That's her very standard farming pattern. If you're having a good game on Luna, that's exactly what you want it to look like. You do that exact rotation, then you play just like any farming carry that's like really strong down here on Dire, up here on Radiant. That's her standard rotations, okay? If she's in a really bad game, she doesn't have standard rotations. Her standard rotations are whatever the opposite of the opponent. That's all it is. Notice how if the enemy team goes bottom, I go top. They go top, I go bottom. And if I need them to leave an area because I want to farm it, I have to force them to leave. Kind of similar to what I did on this tier 2 tower. So if you feel like you need to go somewhere and the opponent's not letting you, you have to go somewhere else to force them to leave that area so that you can then go there if you're losing. If you're winning... You just buy a BKB and run wherever the fuck you want. You know, it's very easy to play Luna when you're winning. But if you're losing, it gets a little wonky. Because she's meant to be winning, because she has a really strong laning phase and really strong mid-game team fighting. So notice how my entire job this game is to not die. And I'm doing that by running really fast and showing in creep waves as minimal as possible. I'm not going to really talk too much about neutral items, because they're going to get um, probably changed in the near future. Just note that any item that makes her, like, Grove Bow, fantastic item. Quicksilver Amulet, fantastic. Anything that makes her do more damage or be able to attack from further are the best items. Same thing here. All I'm trying to do is evade death. It's all I'm trying to do if possible. And this is how you have to play Luna in weird games, guys. Force them to come to you and do your best to not die. It's the only thing you can do, guys. It's the only thing you can do. So this is something I love doing. You know, my chat flames me all the fucking time. 
You know, Quicksilver Amulet is an incredible item on Luna. And if I feel like I don't want to fight the opponent, I will gladly Eclipse in order to use the benefits of this item. I've done it multiple times. I'm not trolling. I think it is completely worth it to give myself 20 attack speed and 4% movement speed. I love doing it. Feel free to do it. Just do it outside the vision of your teammates so that they don't report you. So the way Luna benefits is that she farms so fast that eventually the opponent will have to separate and their heroes will be alone. And when they're alone, you collapse on them. Notice how this Timber Saw is alone for such a split second. And we managed to capitalize on this and kill him. So if you're in a really good game, you just farm the entire map and walk it down a lane. If you're in a really bad game, you ramp up your speed of farm, kill one hero, and leave. Notice that? I didn't participate in the fight any further than one kill, unless the fight goes on long enough that you're seeing here. But I, it's like kind of risky that I'm doing this in the first place. My only contribution really is beam. Big power spike is level 15 on Luna. If you can utilize it, it's a huge power spike. And this is the type of situation where you got to pick and choose your fights really carefully. You get that one opportunity where we hit our power spike of the Manta, power spike of a Manta, BKB. If possible, I always try to look to participate in one fight whenever I hit these big items. On Manta, it's not like a smoke into a team fight. It's pick somebody off and then fight a long prolonged fight if we can and utilize the beam. The 15 talent is a huge power spike not to be trifled with. So my next favorite item in bad Luna games, I do it in this game with the Shadow Blade. I do the same thing in this game, too. I was in a really bad game. We were getting ran over, and I go for the Silver Edge. The thing about Silver Edge is its attack speed, its damage, two things that are amazing on Luna, and then it's not an escape item, people. It's an item that lets you walk around the map without them seeing you. They have to have sentries and wards to see you. So it's literally a farming item that helps accelerate your farm and makes you safer while you're farming, okay? That is why you buy the item. It is not an escape item. You're not like showing in lanes, and then if they go on you, you push it. It allows you to walk through the jungle in areas that could possibly be walking through a ward and stuff, and you can utilize that plus your night vision, and it's really hard to gank you. So bad fighting games, Shadow Blade and Blink Dagger are the name of the game, guys. Why do I have to go Blink Dagger? Because eventually they're going to find me in Shadow Blade, people. Eventually they are going to find me. And the best way to deal with people finding you in games, unless they have really instant lockdown, you know, they have like a Storm Spirit or something, Blink Dagger. It's the same thing on any ranged hero that I'm playing nowadays. This may change in the next patch, but I love playing this way on Luna in really bad games. So this same thing, I got a Silver Edge, I show up to one fight, they have Aegis though, so we're not like super stoked, we just take the Aegis off. Notice how I've just been farming 95% of the game. Quick engagement, once I get a big item. Back to what we were doing. This is the only way to play Luna. If you die during this, it's going to make the game very difficult. But you can absolutely get away with a couple deaths, as you saw in the bottom lane. In this game, I'm definitely going to die a few times as well. And notice how when the opponent's running at my team, and I'm having a game that's really tough to participate, just farm it up, baby. Farm it up. This is the exact same story as the game I played here. I'm just showing you guys a bunch of examples, because this is very common on Luna when you're losing. So in this game, very similar. They had a Timber Saw and a Huskar. Exact same build. Very similar, right? I didn't go Manta this game because Manta sucks against this lineup as a whole. And BKB was way better because they had AA and Huskar as their way of killing me. So BKB was much better in this game. But it's literally the same idea, right? Same idea. BKB is just really bad against Shadow Demon and Troll and Weaver. So it didn't really make sense to go BKB here in the game that you're currently watching with me. But it's the same idea. We couldn't fight them. You know, the graphs are all over the place. But as long as you keep up on farming with Luna and you get that Silver Edge, eventually you're going to be able to pick and choose that fight that you want. Note that Shard is insanely good on Luna. It is an insanely important Shard. Most carries don't buy their Shard until like 5th or 6th item. And the current iteration, if they don't nerf it between now and the time you watch this video, her Shard is an absolute must-buy every single game. I usually buy it after, like, three items or two items. It depends. So, like, in this game, since I'm pretty farmed and I wanted this Silver Age because we're against Timbersaw and Troll, you know, I get this item. Sometimes I'll go, like, Mask of Madness, BKB Dragonlance, then Shard. Sometimes I'll buy the Daedalus or the Scotty, and then Shard. 
The beauty of the shard is that it applies your auto attacks, people, and it makes your Lucent Beam targetable on the ground, which means you can use it like Zeus and search for people, and it makes it so it basically adds your attack damage to Lucent Beam. You couple that with the two and a half second cool cooldown of Beam, it's insane. It also reduces the mana cost by 50, so it's much more reasonable to spam the shit out of your Beam in fights. Notice how in the fights themselves, most of my contribution is beaming people. So unless I'm absolutely free farming, most of my contribution is just beaming people. And that's why the shard is so good. What makes Luna so good in the meta right now is that she can adjust to really good and really bad matchups. In the past, if Luna wasn't allowed to stand her ground and hit people, she was kind of fucked. She kind of just lost the game. But now, with the current shard, she's allowed to just play the outskirts of the fight and output an absurd amount of damage. So when it comes to talents, I pretty much always take the Lucent Beam damage at 20. The Global Lunar Blessing is if I feel like I can actually participate in fights without just beaming the opponent. When it comes to level 25, I pretty much always take the Lunar Blessing damage because uh, the Eclipse Lucent Beam mini stun's kind of garbage, I think. It, at that point, any decent player is going to have BKB, um, unless I'm going some Ags meme build. Um, that's really it. So let's talk about items real quick. I've mentioned Mask of Madness and Manta. You pretty much only go with them in absolute free farm games or complete dog shit games. That's pretty much it. The standard build for Luna in like a close game or a somewhat normal game where you're ahead or it's close, Mask of Madness, Dragon Lance, and a BKB. After that, you're looking at Scotty, Daedalus, or Silver Edge. Those are pretty much the only reasonable items to me because they synergize the best with your shard. So you're pretty much always buying a shard somewhere in that time window, between 20 and 30 minutes. And the items that fit that best are Crit and Scotty, because they apply your attack. Your shard is treated like a normal attack. The first target that you hit with it will get hit by any on-proc effects. Right? So it's very important that you know that it works with Scotty and every other item like that. After that, if they do change shard, by the way, that item will change. <laughs> you know, if the shard doesn't work that way anymore, we can consider other items. Other items that Luna helps scale into the late game are stuff like Butterfly, Satanic, that you can disassemble from the Mask of Madness. But in the current meta, since Shard is so important, you don't really go that. But if they change the Shard, Luna changes. Obviously, Satanic and Bat Bat Butterfly are very good items on her, very reasonable. I pretty much avoid going Hurricane Pike at all costs, unless I absolutely need one, because Luna needs to be a threat, and she also needs to be able to stand her ground. She's not a hero that really benefits from creating distance between her and the opponent because she needs to actually be point blank range to be doing a decent amount of damage and she also does so much damage with very little damage items so i mentioned hurricane pike if you absolutely need it because you're against like a clockwork or a ricky but i very rarely will go for hurricane pike unless it's a hard counter to some hero on the opponent team i said earlier that i avoid any items that don't synergize with glaives Glaives only proc, so I don't go any items that are proc effects like MKB and Maelstrom and stuff, unless I against PA. But even then, I'd ideally just go Silver Edge against PA. Ags is a build I only go if I can burst the opponent because my team has really good stuns. We need the burst damage, and it's a really bad Luna game. If I'm having an even remotely decent game on Luna and I'm farming decently, I will avoid buying Ags at all costs. Uh, it's just a meme. You'd much rather do a bunch of damage with your right clicks. She's absolutely a rapier builder in games that are necessary, but that's, that's like a sixth item. Swift Blink's incredible on her as well. You'll see that in a lot of my games. If you scroll through my game history, you'll see Swift Blink a lot. So the game plan hasn't really changed. Just avoiding the opponent at all costs and just getting a lot of items. If you're in a game where it's rough, this is what the net worth has to look like, because you can make it look like this, because you farm very fast. And notice how eventually they split up, and when they split up, you can look to kill them. If it doesn't work, you just immediately back, such as life. So I made the stupid decision of actually trying to fight them here. You see the mistake that I had? Tried to burst the troll, didn't work out. Notice how every item I go is whatever item that makes it difficult for them to catch me. So I've been delaying BKB because if I go BKB, this troll has a basher going blink dagger, and this guy has his ult, and he's going ags. So this game specifically, BKB is not very good. This other game here, Marcy, Monkey King, all these heroes until the Huskar ags and the Marcy basher, which was pretty late. Until those items, they couldn't stun me in BKB, so I was totally willing to just buy BKB and get away from people. But in this game, BKB is pretty bad, so every item is buying into the fact that I still can't fight them. And you'll learn on Luna the more you play her when you can actually fight people. And even though I've played her a bunch of times, you saw there I tried to take a fight and it didn't work out. 
So it's a very common theme on Luna is winning, knowing when to fight. If you're really far behind, you often don't want to show up to fights at all. Um, unless it's a quick pickoff, quick in, quick out, just like with your mom. <laughs> okay, so this we've seen enough of this game, honestly. Um, we do end up winning, but you get the idea of how you want to play Luna. The late game can get pretty hectic. The only time that I go for SNY is when I'm really far ahead and I want to fight, but I don't need a BKB to do so. Or I'm dealing with BKB piercing disables, such as Rupture, Beastmaster, Axe. That's the only time I'll go for S and Y, because Manta is like so good for the hero that if you're going to buy a Yasha item, you have to have like a really specific reason to get the status resistance from S and Y. Otherwise, it's just not worth it. Um, Ether Lens is not really a thing. The beam range is pretty good already. Um, I've gone Octarine Core a few times, but it's usually like fifth, sixth item because I already have like two damage items and a Scotty. Um, it is a reasonable purchase for like 5th or 6th. Same with the Refresher for the double Eclipse, double BKB. But these are like very late game items. These are like 5th, 6th slot items. In team fights, Luna is very similar to PL right now. In regards to you're constantly beaming people just like PL lances people, playing the outskirts of the fight until you feel safe enough to go in. So unless you're a raid boss with a BKB or you've got Aegis and you're really far ahead, Luna will usually stay in the back until her team has created a situation that you guys are able to go, excuse me, that you're able to go on people or that you've already killed one or two targets. Luna does have to be patient with entering fights because as you saw in that bottom fight against the troll, if I, caught, if I catch myself in the middle of this fight here, I kind of just die, right? Once you, once you catch yourself in a precarious situation as Luna, as you see here, I'm kind of just done. I can't do anything. I'm stuck standing still, can't fight the guy that BKBs, and I'm done for. So a big difference between Gyro and Luna, a lot of people ask about Gyro and Luna as a difference, is that Gyro's Ags allows him to stand his ground and man fight a hero one-on-one. -on -one. Luna has absolutely no way to have single target damage. She actually does more damage if there's two people hitting her than she does if there's only one. So the biggest difference about Luna and Gyro as ranged carries that are very similar because they have magic damage and team fight and stuff is that Luna absolutely cannot do anything once she's found herself with a hero in front of her face, even with a satanic. If you're one-on-one -on -one against a carry, you're going to lose because none of, none of Luna's abilities make her win 1v1. That is a big component of Luna that you have to be very careful for. She can poke and prod. She gives her teammate a lot of vision with the Lunar Blessing, and she gives them a lot of damage with the Lunar Blessing. And her beam is a lot of control in fights. And her eclipse is a really nice amount of burst damage if you ever catch someone locked down. But if you have a carry in your face, you're probably dying. So keep that in mind with Luna. It's very important when it comes to team fight approach. In final notes for Luna, um, when you guys are looking to play Luna, I want you guys to remember everything I said. She flash farms, and her strength is almost always gauged on how strong her team is. If you want to learn when to fight on Luna, a lot of it is asking when you think your teammates' heroes will fight. Like, I have three strength melee heroes against a Timber Saw in this game. I was also against a Troll with a lot of farm. So it's a game where my team has a very difficult time fighting. If my teammates cannot fight, usually Luna cannot carry the fight. Her strength in fights is directly proportional to her team's ability to do anything. So if you guys are behind, notice how in this game I fought very little. You know, at 28 minutes into the game, I have six kill involvement. But in games where my team is really strong and we're steamrolling, I'm going to run around the map and fight everybody because I do so much for my team with 35 free damage for everybody. And I'm just so useful in team fights compared to a lot of other carries. And I can take a ton of objectives and end the game really early. And a lot of the games where you're winning super early on Luna, you can just end. You know, people sometimes just give up. But, you know, uh, the games I'm playing here, this one was 25 minutes. This one's 23 minutes. The game I just got done playing is 20 minutes. Like, games can snowball out of control very fast in games where your teammates either win their lane or um, what have you. A quick last example is that if I find myself taking two points in beam in lane, those are really the only times I'm going to be willing to level Eclipse. So I want to show you guys this real quick. I was in a heavily contested lane that I had a really strong laning support with Bane, so I took three points in Aura and two points in Beam, no point in Glaive. But even though I'm free farming this lane, just like in the first game, I take Glaives at six, and I just start pushing out the lane, resuming the game plan. So that never really changes. But for the guide's purpose, let's fast forward this real quick. 
So in this specific game, since I took two points in beam, and there's an engagement going on mid, and their mid has already engaged all of his, or used all of his resources, I will level Eclipse. This is pretty much the only time I will level Eclipse, is when I find an opportunity like this to get a crucial kill on a crucial target. Otherwise, I'm not going to use it, and it was reactionary. I didn't plan that. Very similar situation that we find ourselves in this game. Ranged offlaner with a lot of kill potential. Last time it was Venge, this time it's Visage plus um, Rubik. Very similar to that Venge game. And this case, we're chasing down a Visage, and I got my level 6, and a Pudge TP's in, so I level Eclipse here. It's the exact same thing. This is the only time I level Eclipse. If there's literally an opportunity in front of me when I have the skill point available, it's the same thing. Otherwise, I'm pretty much not leveling Eclipse until like level 10 or 11. So that's really important exceptions to note there. Nothing fancy. Don't force it. Don't plan ganks on Luna. Just take the opportunities that are presented to you based on what your teammates are doing. If you're ahead, your decisions are based on what your strong teammates are doing, whether that's pushing towers or taking fights. If you're behind, you're mirroring the opponent. You're basing your movements and fight participation on the strength of your teammates or the strengths of the opponent based on whoever's winning. And if you do that, you'll learn really fast when to participate in fights on Luna and exactly how to maximize her farm on the map. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this Luna guide. Really love this hero in 7.30. She's a great hero to learn right now. And if you're watching this in the future, I think she's still a great hero to have in your kit. Thanks for watching, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. GG.